Recording in progress. an analog switch of date if we are not sure that all South Africans who applied for set-top boxes have been connected because we've committed that we leave no one behind. So whatever date will gazette ultimately, it will be based on the fact that we are certain that with the numbers that are standing for to be installed, we would have installed all of them by that date. So there won't be a date that will be gazetted if all those who have applied by the 30th of September 2022 have not been installed or they will not have been installed by that date. That will be the date of the switch off. Thank you, Chairperson. I hand over back to you. Thank you, Madam Minister and uh, the project team. Um, <clears throat> honorable members, uh, you've now received the presentation. Uh, just to outline how we are going to ensure inclusivity uh, in the participation. Uh, of course, I'll take uh, first two ends from the National Assembly, uh, and the other two ends would be from uh, the NA, uh, from the NCOP, the Select Committee. Um, if we get into such an order, we'll be able to cover almost all members, uh, depending on the time of raising your hands. Um, in that score, I would uh, start with uh, the Honorable Kumbu from the NA, followed by Honorable Bordani. Uh, uh, from I see from the NCOP side, we have uh, Honorable uh, Bibi, uh, followed by Honorable Madise, who will take uh, Honorable Tembo thereafter would then be uh, followed by another member to be recognized. But let's now move to Honorable Kum, followed by Honorable Bajani. Honorable Kumbu, you are not unmuted. Please unmute. So then, uh, well, second, second, uh, I was I was just struggling. I'm just blowed it now. Chair, uh, mm -hmm. if you can allow me not to switch on my video because as I'm indicating that um, load shaded chair. So permission granted. Proceed. Thank you, thank you, chair, and uh, greetings to the minister and uh, uh, the chairperson of the select committee and uh, everyone in the meeting. Chair, let me appreciate the presentation made. Chair, this is an indication uh, that uh, the department is doing very well in terms of uh, the rollout. But Chair, just one thing. I uh, just want to check whether we, we still have uh, uh, this uh, set of boxes which are still lying at the post offices, branches, and uh, warehouses. And Chair, if that is the case, can the department provide us with the exact number of such set of boxes? Uh, but otherwise, uh, one is satisfied uh, about the work that has uh, been done by the department in this regard, Chair. Thank you. Chair, was I audible? Yes, uh, I recognize Honorable Bolani to be the next, who would then be followed by Honorable Bibi, Honorable Mudise, and then Honorable Mutim in that order. We can proceed, Honorable Bolani. To welcome the presentation. Uh, I think your, your, while your line, I would like to, if you can probably switch I beg off, your video. if you can switch off the video camera, let's see if it improves. Oh, yeah. all right, let's try again, Chairperson. Yeah, we can hear you clearly now. Please, yes, please. Chair, I was saying while we acknowledge that there cannot be an indefinite and open-ended process in the uh, digital migration. 
how is the department going to deal with people that are going to fall through the cracks? And this is acknowledging that the minister has said that she will not make a pronouncement until people have already gone through. But we've, we've still getting reports somewhere that people have not applied and whatnot. How are we going to ensure that we indeed do not leave anybody behind those that would have fallen through the cracks? Is it at all possible, Chairperson, to get a list of the project partners because uh, we have seen the department has really made a lot of in terms of uh, publicizing the 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 the, the taking it the, the project out to ensure that people are really are informed. And chairperson, with the reality of low shading, what does it mean to the cost of this project? Is it are we going to see an escalation? We take comfort in the department already saying there will not be any further delays. But then my question is, what does this mean to the cost when the department has to find alternative energy sources to ensure that they leave no one behind? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Bodani. Now recognize Honorable Bibi. Please proceed. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Greetings to the minister and also uh, to the both chairpersons um, of the session and also the colleagues. Chairperson, I've got only two questions here. Uh, the first one will be, um, uh, Chairperson, in view of the report uh, that more than 100 uh, post office branches uh, have been closed, and considering that some of these branches, um, if not all, were for set box as uh, for set top boxes. Um, can the department please explain if the closure of these branches has not affected uh, access by the public to set top boxes? Or rather what measures uh, you have put in place to ensure that um, the public uh, can still have access to these um, set-top boxes, despite uh, the closure of some post office uh, branches. And the second question, Chairperson, will be, um, I've noted that in one of your um, slides, Department, you state that 44% of installer companies are owned by women of which I think that as a department, you must be commended for. For that, uh, for your commitment to women empowerment. Now, my question is, um, however, uh, the women ownership should split uh, across uh, nine provinces uh, to avoid uh, the situation where a woman owned company from Gauteng uh, goes and installs set top boxes in Pumalanga or Limpombo uh, or vice versa. So those are my two questions, Chairperson. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Honorable Bibi. I now recognize the Honorable Mutisa. No, thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, if you allow me to not to switch on my video because of the network, uh, please. Yes, um, please proceed. Okay, Chair, thank you very much, Chair, both uh, Chairperson of the Council Committee and the Chairperson on Portfolio Committee, Minister and my colleagues, good morning. Chair, I've got two questions, but the other one, Honorable Bibi Tajit, though, not much fully. Um, the initial number of eligible household for the set top boxes was estimated to be just around 5 million within the recent, I just want to check within the recent job losses as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and the sluggish economic growth. These numbers have been surely increased. Having said that, 
Will the department be able to fund all eligible households in the recent, I mean, in receiving the uh, free set top boxes? That's my first question. Second question is, beside the 44% women-owned companies involved in the BDM project, what is the overall BB, uh, triple BEE budget expenditure as we speak now? Thank you very much. Uh, those are my two questions. Thank you, Honorable uh, Odisa. I'll now recognize the Honorable Tembo. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. Greetings to you. Uh, greetings to the Minister and all members of the committee. Honorable Chair, firstly, I just want to welcome a presentation and also appreciate um, the good work done by the, 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 the department. Um, I want to echo the same sentiment with uh, Honorable Bibi for the distribution of uh, women uh, in, in all pr provinces. But then um, I, I want also to appreciate um, uh, the, 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 the percentage that has um, uh, considered for women. 44%, uh, it's uh, something um, I think never happened before. But then um, I also heard that the youth also considered uh, in, 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 in uh, this uh, program. But uh, I haven't heard anything about the disability people. I'm not sure whether something, uh, there is something I missed, Honorable Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Honorable Timbo. I'll take this to be the first round of questions and allow the Minister and the team to respond. Is that Honorable Machos? It's Honorable Machos, yes. I wrote in the group, Chairperson. My apologies. I don't have um, that icon that um, um, I, 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 I should uh, be raising my hand on, and my network is very bad on my side. You, you can then proceed. Uh, okay. Please. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Um, no, good uh, morning to the minister, the the officials of the department. I had greeted uh, other honourable members and um, the select committee. No, on my side, Chair, is to welcome the feedback and the report that we're getting from um, the the department, but also it raises concerns in terms of the delays that are there. Um, which then maybe would um, say there were challenges. I would say they were challenges because now it seems as if we are getting to the end of it in the department. And also maybe to 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 concur with Honorable Polani on the fact that um, I don't think on my end that um, we have reached um, all people who qualify for the set of boxes. Um, but hopefully once we have set this first phase, maybe then we can consider uh, expanding and, and, and getting more uh, people into the, the system so that they, those that qualify for the set of boxes. And then hopefully this time we do meet our, our target and our deadline. And also with the spectrum, hopefully um, we do then um, meet our deadline as well. Uh, it was just to raise that chairperson that maybe um, we, we can consider having a second phase in terms of the set of boxes to make sure that those that did not or, or who were not able to, to get into the system are um, able to be in the system. And especially with the load shedding that we've been experiencing, we don't know that maybe people have been uh, trying to to get into the system and they cannot. So uh, maybe there are those challenges that we must look at as well um, into the department. I'm just um, cautioning that uh, maybe we might have other people that are not yet into the system. Maybe we might consider a second phase. Thanks, Chair. 
Thank you. Honorable Ntembu, I'm not sure if you, your hand is a legal one or there was a point you wanted to mention. Sorry, Chair, it's a legal one. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Would now uh, give the minister and the team the opportunity to respond and would indicate the appropriate response. I will then take uh, the next round of hands uh, thereafter. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. I think there are questions from three honorable members that are related, and two that are also related. <clears throat> the question by Honorable Gumbu on the central boxes still in post office branches and warehouses, and the question by Honorable Bibi on the impact of the closed post office uh, branches in terms of access to central boxes by both the department and also by members of the public. I want to uh, assure members that last year, in the early last year, we undertook a project to go across all post offices and all warehouses of the post office. And when we say all, we mean all. Personally, I visited 80% of those, but the team covered the remainder of the post offices and the warehouses. In terms of the major warehouses, I visited all of them. And what the purpose of those visits was not just to go and do sightseeing, it was to remove all the set-top boxes that were there, that have been lying there maybe some from 2018, 2017, 2016, and the other period, and make sure that they're assigned. We moved all of those uh, set-top boxes, we assigned to everybody who had applied, and we moved what was not uh, assigned to anybody to a central place, which for our purpose is Vespos, to make sure there are no set of boxes that are lying in post offices. But in the course of installations, when the uh, installers are installing set of boxes in households, where they go and do not find the, the people in that address that is mentioned, they are required to go three times. If they do not find the, the people in that address, they come back and leave the set of box because the set of boxes are assigned to an individual household to a person. They leave them at the post office nearest to them. We call them returns. And with those returns, we aggregate them continuously. And then we either reassign to another household in the locality or we move them where there is need if in that locality there's no need. So there is no, what we call in business, there's no post office, there's no post offices that has lying set of boxes except what we call working stock. Working stock is the stock that would have been returned, which will be reassigned. And the numbers are really uh, insignificant given the scale of what we are, we are dealing with. So therefore the impact of the closure of post offices does not impact on the department having access to the set of boxes. And what is good is that when the, the post offices were it is scheduled uh, by post office to say we are going to close this branch because of that is not a viable branch or because of our cost management issues, where then if there's any other stock that is remaining, it's moved uh, to another branch to, to avoid the, the, the non-acceptability. Even where they are closed for non-payment and whatever, we, because they just do not close, they give us notice to say you have not closed, you have not paid for whatever, uh, either rent or whatever, therefore we're going to close you out. So we are able to move the set of boxes out. In addition, I need to clarify that members of the public never had to access uh, set of boxes at post offices. Members of the public uh, received their set of boxes from installers that are designated to install that particular area. I thought it's important to clarify that part. And then there's the question by Honorable Botlani, Honorable Mudise, and Honorable Majuz. On, 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 on the making sure we leave no one behind. Maybe let me start by, on the question by Honorable Mutise. There was no target of 5 million households. There was an estimation of the number of TV, TV viewing households by States SA. So for planning purposes, that number was used to plan how many households are indigent so that we plan for. That's why in terms of policy, it doesn't say the department will go and find the individual households that are indigent. It says the individual households must then apply and meet a particular criteria to then be installed. So what we have as the application number, is Mr. On, uh, Mr. Lishupe will then give the details of what has been the number that has applied, the number of households that has 
applied during uh, during the period. And uh, agreeing that we cannot, as Honorable uh, Bordelani says, we cannot run the uh, project into perpetuity. So there must be a cut of the constitutional court directed us to say, give members of the public sufficient time, those who qualify, sufficient time to take a decision whether to apply for the sector box or not to apply. It, must, it is their own decision. So it didn't give us the obligation. It also gave the members of the public or qualifying households the responsibility to apply. And the concord said, when you give that a sufficient period to, for people to apply, you must make sure that you take into cognizance the work that you had already done, the notification from 2010, 2011, 2017, to yourself in 2021, 20, in 2022, that period must be taken into account. And that's what Mr. Lishupi then and I have presented to say, what are the measures we did to make sure that there is notice and sufficient notice and the period. And we took the three months period from uh, the Concord date. We did it, we gave people three months notice, but we just not give them three months notice. We had the uh, government gazette in all official languages. We had the, uh, the radio promos, the TV promos, the activations in communities, the partnership with the House of Traditional Leaders and, and Khoisan Leaders and also Salga. And we have those engagement to make sure that we can then make sure that those who are interested to apply get the information and they apply. And the number, Mr. Lishupi indicated, is 174,000 that then came through and applied for the set top boxes during that period, and not the millions that were suggested that are being left behind. And we accept that the um, uh, what the Honorable Botlani say, people will be lost. Uh, through the cracks. They are not lost to the cracks. It's what we call doubting promises in, 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 our, in our thing. But we have made provision to say, when we have switched off, and it, we have always made that emphasis, that when we have switched off, we will make sure that those who then apply after the switch off, they will be connected and we always build capacity and retain capacity to make sure by the time they apply, we have the necessary set of boxes. We've got the installers to install them as quick as possible. But the country cannot be held ransom by people who decide not to take action and apply. The court and the highest court of the country says they have an obligation to apply and we've given them the opportunities to apply. If they do not apply, our own uh, responsibilities is that by the time they apply, we should be able to connect them. And when they apply, we will definitely connect them. And Honorable Mudise raises an important question to say, look, the a status of indigent is not a is not a permanent status. Some graduate out, some join in. With the impact of COVID nineteen, the ones who are impacted by COVID nineteen majority were given an opportunity to apply both in twenty twenty one and also continuously until the thirtieth of September. But those who have been impacted by load shedding, because load shedding is also impacting on the livelihood, as they come through, they would apply. But the period that low shedding started to impact on the economy, majority of those who qualified would have qualified and applied. On our own provision, we have said, we cannot terminate the project completely. We'll do the switch off, but we'll allow a skeletal team to remain, including installers, to remain doing the work of installing the households that would have applied or that would have fall, that would fall in region, not only next year, in 2027, in 2028, that this project must continue to be available unless we are sure that the penetration of digital television across the country is between 70 and 90%, because we are required to say, when you've got a digital television penetration of that rate, there's no need for a continuous assistance on, on set top boxes, because you need, everybody can afford it, I mean, TV sets will be available, but also the, the Migration of technology, people are not watching TV on the TV sites, people are watching TV on streaming platforms. And that's why, again, on the benefit of the digital migration, the SABC has been able to launch on DTT a 24 hours news channel in our all indigenous, indigenous languages, that is 10 languages, that is all African languages plus Africans. So we no longer have to wait for news in English and uh, or news in a, a week in Tibet, that was stronger or current affairs, we are then benefiting from this project of digital migration by having direct access to news. The platform is called Tree, SABC Tree, so that you, you know what to watch. Even Parliament Life is there, and it's, in, it's also in our local languages that is broadcast in, 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 the, in, in that platform. And Honorable Chairperson, the impact of load shedding is not, an imp is not impacting on on is not impacting is is not impacting on the cost of the project. It's impacting on the delays 
with the implementation. If you check the period and with which uh, uh, Mr. Rishupi was presenting, we were doing a run rate of 65,000 per month uh, uh, installations, but we have gone down to 45,000 because at some point, installers will have to wait for load shedding to pass for them to do, but they've now become very creative. They're using drills that, um, that are not power backed, they, they, they drill startup as, uh, uh, solar backed, but they're also using uh, some of them are taking those with larger areas. They're taking generators with them so that they can continue the installation. And then they do what they they do what we call activation of the TV after the uh, the, the power the, the power is So that is the impact. It's not impacting on on our cost per se for now. It will impact on the cost overall when we have a delay in terms of the time period that it takes to do. I'm sure the issues of uh, partners, project partners, the Mr. Shubi could, uh, could deal with, and Mr. Shubi could demonstrate uh, the spread of, uh, I think we can show the spread of companies across the provinces. And that means uh, on a vote to Honorable Bibi and Honorable Mtembu, that that spread of uh, companies includes women companies across provinces. He'll show when he does the response in terms of the companies, he'll show the what is the spread of, of, the, of the companies across. I think these other things I'll leave to Mr. Lishupi to just uh, explain to honorable members. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister, through you, Chair. Please proceed. Thank you. Yes, Minister addressed most of the uh, uh, questions that relates to the uh, households that may fall through the crack as the committee reflects. So I will start on those that uh, uh, are more technical and starting, I think, secondly, the Honorable Gumbu's questions are addressed by Minister. Honorable Bordlani's first question was addressed by Minister. The second question in terms of list of project partners. Uh, on the approved BDM uh, model, Honorable uh, Botlani, we have assigned responsibilities to various entities, various uh, partners for the BDM project rollout. So there were various pillars in terms of our model and design uh, of the project itself. We had a pillar of uh, awareness where we assigned the SABC to lead us in terms of that. There was a pillar of registrations and distribution of set of box. That particular pillar was assigned to SAPO, uh, our post offices. And then there was data management and data analytics across the entire project, uh, CETA. It was assigned that uh, responsibility. And then there is the pillar of installations that was assigned to Centec. The aftermarket support uh, uh, of the set-top boxes uh, uh, is assigned to the SABC and Centec. And then there was the funding aspect of the project that was assigned to USASA with the DCDT giving the overall oversight of the project. There's obviously the second tier where each of this entity, Honorable Bodlani then who works with the various partner and the, the, the detailed, I think in the installers, we were reflecting you know, that positive impact in terms of the economic side of it. But we, 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 we would like to share this level of partnerships uh, with the committee. And your second question minister addressed is indeed the the cost of load shedding on the project is more time than it is financial, uh, uh, but we we continuing with the with managing the the load shedding impact and uh, of course it's uh, it, 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 it's cost uh, as well. And then honourable baby's question in terms of the, the spread of the. Uh, Chair, if you can allow me to share the screen and maybe confirm if the uh, screen is visible, uh, just to uh, demonstrate to the committee in terms of the spread of our installers. Uh, we have installers appointed in each of the provinces, uh, Honorable uh, Bibi, with the uh, lowest province in terms of number of installers being the Northern Cape with uh, 48 and the highest being uh, Houghton with 194. And uh, our uh, observation is that the spread between women and male, it's, it's, it's proportional across the allocation of the uh, areas there. The scope for each province varies 
province. Uh, some provinces have very high the number of installations, some has very low. Also, this is also proportional to the population per province as, as, as well. And we can confirm, or honorable Bibi, that we, we remain committed. Uh, and as the minister says, that uh, uh, we are looking into how we are going to maintain the already installed database, how we are going to refresh the already installed set of boxes. And in that, we will consider you know, the, those households that are becoming indigent uh, as a result of the economy. So given the opportunity, honorable committee members, we will always drive the objective of uh, giving opportunities uh, to women so we can uh, commit uh, uh, on that. And then the issues raised by Honorable Mudise, I think we also addressed by uh, the Minister. Uh, Honorable Tembu, uh, the spreadsheet uh, reflected there also reflects on the distribution. What we will do, Honorable Tembu, you were asking in terms of the disability contrib uh, contribution of the project. We will quantify that uh, through your chair, through your permission, and maybe make it available at, at our next uh, update for, for the committee, the disability aspect of the, uh, the contributions not included here. So if you could allow us to bring it back with our next uh, presentation. And then Honorable Majosi's question, I think it's also addressed in terms of uh, the second opportunity. Uh, uh, after switch off those doubting Thomases, I think there is a uh, fair consideration that yeah, there could be some people waking up after the analog switch off and uh, requesting uh, to be considered. I think there is all, uh, in all fairness, positive consideration for that. We are making a proposal for uh, uh, final consideration in terms of how the household should be maintained how the set of boxes should be refreshed. And we do take an input from the committee to consider after analog switch off, uh, whether those that come after should be, uh, can be considered in that process. Chairperson, I believe I have covered uh, the questions that were outstanding. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chairperson. Before Mr. Lishupi gets off, I'd like him to address the issue of the total number of households that applied vis-a-vis -vis the, the 5 million that Honorable Mudise spoke of. But I think we need to also submit the list of the project partners, including the National House of Traditional Leaders and SALGA in terms of our partnership on that. And we'll provide that uh, in writing to the portfolio committee. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Yes, and I think it's important to, to, to reflect on this because this question, I think, is often engaged on without context, uh, Honorable Chair, Honorable uh, Minister. The indigenous households uh, are the SA database, but we have to contextualize that not all the indigenous households uh, uh, are relying on uh, terrestrial televisions. So we did some analysis in terms of how many households rely on satellite televisions and the people that have self-migrated uh, uh, preferring satellite television. So it's a choice that a citizen has made. So at the time when we did our analysis against the total household, 76% of our citizens or TV uh, households had uh, uh, connected to satellite uh, uh, television. Now in terms of the the 5 million estimate uh, 